Well, hello, everybody. Trey here. It's been a hot minute. I've been on many adventures. Uh, one of the adventures has been playing with my own AI, and now I can share it with you guys. It's like a photo critique AI. Uh, so in this little tutorial, I'll show you how to use it, some little hidden treasures in there. And let me just start with a quick one here. I'll just click the little paper clip here, and I'll pick this photo that I recently took in Scotland. This one is a winner. I don't think it will give me a bad critique. Although later in this, I'm gonna upload some photos that I don't like, and you'll see it's a little bit harsh, you know, but in a nice way, like me. So you just basically click the photo, click upload, and what it does is it pulls from um, a bunch of books that I put into it and 5,000 of my blog entries. And so it uses as, that as like a corpus of information that it uses to, uh, you know, kind of critique your photo. Um, I'm also going to make other tutorials. Uh, I'm going to make one about how easy it is to make your own AI or your own GPT. Um, I'll make another one that kind of shows all the cool stuff that's happening with AI and imagery. Like there's some amazing stuff that's happening, especially like real time image generation using stable diffusion. And then I'll also do a little analysis of how I create my various AI images of which I've been making a ton. Uh, Cause I've kind of figured a few things out and I want to share it with everybody. But as for this one, um, you'll see it gives like a pretty nice long critique. Um, and it completely analyzes the photo and it's, you know, quite nice. The interplay between light and shadow here is quite divine, isn't it? It is, if I do say so myself. The way the light spills over the hills, casting parts of the valley in the soft shadow, gives the landscape a dynamic texture that's simply captivating. Indeed. Thank you, AI. Uh, now returning to the technical aspects, this one HDR image, one might have to be careful not to let those shadows plunge too deep in the blackness or allow the highlights to blow out. Actually, I think that's a bit of a critique. It is a little dark there in the shadows, isn't it? Maybe the photo does have a few flaws. There's no better critique than one from yourself, that's what they say. Uh, oh, another suggestion for improvement. Maybe consider the rule of third and the sun's placement, which provide an even more dynamic asymmetry to the scene. But of course, that's often a matter of personal preference. And then it always ends with a question. You know, uh, that's kind of how I trained it to kind of dig in, right? So what was going through your mind when you captured this moment? Any particular challenges or decisions you faced on location? So really, the critique is kind of the beginning of a conversation. Um, and you can ask more questions if you want to, and, uh, you know, it'll pull stuff from my books, uh, say, yeah, I was worried about the high winds for my drone and getting, uh, a set of brackets that lined up. Let's see what it has to say about that. Uh, High winds can indeed be quite the nemesis for drone photography. Uh, it says any misalignment is bad. Yes, I know. I wrote the book. Uh, shoot at a higher shutter speed to minimize motion blur. That's a good idea. Yeah. So anyway, that's an example. Let me show you some more. Uh, it's also nice to start up a new one for each new photo so that you have a, a record over there on the left. So, uh, by the way, that's my real name, Raymond Ratcliffe. People call me Trey. Actually, my legal name is Raymond Franklin Ratcliffe III, but that sounds a bit pretentious, I think. Uh, also, right now we have about almost 3,000 users of this thing, which is great. This is currently free. Um, there's talk from OpenAI that they're going to make like a, a GPT store, kind of like an app store. So it might not always be free, but for now it is. Just get in there and play with it. You do have to be like a subscriber to ChatGPT, which is 20 bucks a month, which I really recommend. I'll give some reasons at the end why I think that's like a great uh, investment. Not just for my GPT, but like this whole, you know, ChatGPT can really add to your life, many aspects of it. So... Let's try something here. Let's uh, upload two different photos and have it choose the best one. Okay, here are two photos from Shanghai. Uh, one with a gal with an umbrella and one of just the city. So let's upload both of those. Boom. And say, uh, which one of these is better? 
I don't have to say and why, it'll tell me why. Uh, so now it's analyzing both of them. And every time I've done this, it's come out with actually what I think is correct. Uh, the eternal conundrum of choosing between two delightful photos, each with its own unique charm. The first image, the absence of any prominent human allows the viewer to fully immerse themselves in the reflective glory of Shanghai's lights on the wet pavement. Um, isn't that nice? With the buildings standing tall and proud, their lights twinkling like stars fallen to earth. So it will, this GPT, if it recognizes where your photo's from, like here, Shanghai, it will, it will say so. Every time it's been right, it hasn't gotten it wrong yet. Now that's natural about the second image. Here, the presence of individuals, particularly the lass with the umbrella, adds a splinted narrative layer. It's a personal touch, a sense of story that beckons the viewer to ponder, what's her tale? What's the tittle-tattle of the city at night? It personalizes the urban landscape. So which is better? If you fancy a more architectural, a pure cityscape, the first one, but if you're inclined towards a photo that tells more of a tale, the second will tickle your fancy. Now, a lot of times it, it's like very political and it won't really give a strong opinion as to which one is better. So you can press it. Say, all right, come on now. If you had to rank them, what's the best one? Yo, you give a little attitude. It's fine. It's friendly. Like me. That's how my mama raised me. All right, let's dive in with gusto. The gusto of a seagull spotting a chip. Uh, the second image, with our mystery lady twirling her umbrella like the lead in a rain-soaked ballet, steals the show. It's got character intrigue and the human element. I agree. Uh, it's got the je ne sais quoi that transforms the photo from simply being looked at to truly being seen. Great. Yeah, I completely agree. Well done, my AI. All right, now I'm going to venture to upload a photo I don't really like. Uh, I took this one in Glasgow on the way back from one of those days where I hiked like 25 kilometers and I was just exhausted. But let me just upload here and see what it has to say. I was trying to do something kind of cool, but I think it just kind of came out kind of lame. I don't publish most of my photos. I love street photography. Um, it's cool because you can read the fire water. Um, let's see. The figures are bathed in a mysterious shade. Perhaps to mirror the, the enigmatic allure of night, the night outings. However, this veil of darkness might have obscured the finer details that could tell us more about the people and their stories. One could argue that the composition may benefit from a tad more illumination on the crowd. I agree. Allowing for a glimpse into the expressions and interactions. After all, human connections are the lifeblood of such settings. Um, yeah. I'll say yeah, it's... Okay, be tough on me. Uh, be harsh. All right, treat me like a redheaded stepchild. Um, Righto, let's roll up his sleeves and dive in with that, with a bit of that British cheek, shall we? The Firewater Establishment, while glowing like a beacon of hedonistic, of hedonistic promise, is a siren call amidst a sea of murk. Yeah, the science neon scream is a valiant effort, but fails to cut through the murky abyss of the underexposed masses. <laughs> it's as if everyone has been dipped in a vat of Vanta black, which is the ultimate black, with a camera sensor struggling to find a detail to love. Uh, the composition has a potential for a Gatsby-esque vibrancy, but the execution has all the brightness of a British summer, <laughs> promising yet disappointingly dreary. Uh... Yeah. And while we're peeking into the void, one might wonder if the chap with the camera phone is capturing something of intrigue or merely blinded by the abyss of his screen, which appears to be the only other source of light willing to fight against the encroaching darkness. Well, I don't even know what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, there's a guy looking at his phone. I didn't even notice that. Hold on. Yeah, so, you know, feel free to uh, dig in and ask for some more critical details because it'll get into it with you. Okay, now let's play with this one. Uh, this is one of my newer creations, even though I took it many years ago at White Sands National Desert. I, I process things out of order, but I like the way it turned out. Um, so this is another thing you could do with the uh, GPT. By the way, you could say like, uh, 
please critique me, but you don't have to. It just knows what to do. Uh, but you can precede it with something, right? You can say, like, please be harsh. Uh, tell me five things wrong with this photo. Uh, or you can say, like, can you guess where it is? So it's giving me a nice little thing here. I'll say, can you make me a social media post about this photo? Bam. And then just let me do your writing for you or let my AI do the writing for you. It does a little emoticons. As the sun kisses the day goodbye, it leaves a trail of amber and gold across the New Mexican landscape. It knew it was New Mexico. Incredible. I don't know how it knew it, because it's not in the EXIF. It's barely recognizable as White Sands National Desert, by the way. That is impressive. Uh, there's little emoticons and... Every time I look at this photo, I can feel the warm breeze and the hush of the desert wrapping the world in a tranquil embrace. Look at that. And it does tags for you and everything. How cool is that? Okay, let's try this. I'll say, can you create a similar photo, but with the sun setting? And here it goes. It's creating an image. Uh, now, this will be like created just like out of the blue right it won't uh it probably won't pull from my image it'll make something totally new look at that a little overdone i say all right uh that's cool but a little less saturated and can we get landscape format format master typer here uh, and with any of these images, you can click them and look at them full screen and download them. They're pretty high res. And of course, you can up res them in other ways. Hey, and there we go. So it'll kind of pull from my styles from all my photos and give you something in that in that light, so to speak. And you can also use my GPT to create like totally new photos that kind of use my style. Um, but you can just be all over the show. Uh, show me photos of animals from... Botswana attacking one another, but the animals are made out of colorful mirrors. It's sun sunset be seen of the animals attacking is intense. Okay, it's creating. How exciting. So one point I want to make is one thing I hear from artists and photographers, they complain about AI, and I want to dispel this idea that what it does is it pulls from other photographers' work, right, that have been uploading their stuff online, and it kind of Frankensteins together a photo. That's not how the AI works. It creates it from the ground up. Like, for example, I mean, how many people have been out there taking photos of, you know, animals from Botswana made out of mirrors? Nobody. It makes this stuff out, out of the blue. Uh, I mean, how cool is that? Um, just, it's so fun. I hope you guys have the best time with it. Okay, now I uploaded this photo from Tokyo. This is from the Golden Guy area of Shinjuku, all these little alleyways. It's not my favorite photo of this area, but I wanted to see what it would say. And you see this is a little bit of a long exposure because you see this little kind of ghostly figure right there. And if it recognizes a place, it will, you know, try to say the place, try to guess. It says, ah, the vibrant hum of a Tokyo alley after dusk. What a feast for the sensory circuitry. Um, blah, blah, blah. It says some nice things here. You can zoom in and read it all. I'm not going to read it out loud to you. Um, it did notice that uh, ghosty things. It says, the long exposure has turned the passerby into phantoms, adding a layer of transience to the image. Indeed. So it does make a little suggestion here. It says, if I may venture a suggestion for improvement, one might consider the role of a human element. While the ghostly figures add intrigue, a sharp silhouette or two could offer a counterpoint to the scene's static elements, a snapshot of life amidst the stillness. And then it always asks little questions at the end. You can ignore those. It, you know, it tries to engage you in conversation. And as you talk more about your photo, it actually will guide you in different ways. Um, so I responded, I said, yeah, I want to get a person in there too, but 
people walking is hard to get with long exposure at night. Any ideas? And it responds with five ideas. Uh, one, stage symbiosis. These are all kind of made up little phrases it came up with just for fun. Uh, which is suggesting that I have a subject stand as still as a statue. Uh, second is to use a flash. I don't like to use flashes. Uh, third, fourth, five, many ideas. So it's really great. Uh, gives all kinds of ideas there. And then, and this is a more advanced question that I asked for some of, the, some of you that are more advanced and understand like ISO and shutter speed and stuff. I said, how should I set the ISO and what... What would the ideal shutter speed be to capture a walker here at night? And then it gives the, you know, exact right answer. You know, you get your ISO up to 800 to 1600. Shutter speed, 1 30th of a second to 1 60th of a second. That's exactly right if you want to get a crisp image. Um, and it gives other suggestions as well. So, yeah, feel free to, like, drill in and ask it more questions. You know, you don't... The critique is just like a starting point. You can drill in and ask more and more questions and it will get more and more in depth for you. Okay, now let's analyze this photo. Now, I don't particularly like this photo. I, I am uploading a few photos that I'm not really that into um, just to see what it says, you know, things I see problems with. This is just like one of probably a thousand photos I took at this festival. Uh, this is the Relish Festival in New Zealand, which is the best festival I've been to. It was like way better than Burning Horse. I mean, Burning Horse is okay if you like hanging around with drunk bogans from Gore. I mean, it has its charm, but you know, after a few hours of that, it becomes a bit droll. I did find my crowd eventually at Burning Horse. That's another story. Anyway, Relish is great. So here's this photo. Okay, we have a bunch of hippies here and like a massage line. I love hippies. I consider myself a hippie. I bifurcate my hippie friends into two groups, like low-functioning hippies and high-functioning hippies. I would like to think I'm in the latter. Anyway, let's see how it analyzes this photo. So you can see it kind of uses my, my humor and all this stuff. It says, ah, a rich scene with a joyous abandon of festival life, where the only schedule is the rhythm of the heart and the only agenda is whimsy. We have a smattering of festival goers lounging like Greek philosophers post symposium in a tableau that whispers of midsummer's warmth and the tang of a day well spent. It's great. And it can read the signs of the background. It says, The delicious zone, indeed. One cannot help but giggle at the delightful honesty of such a moniker, as if the tent itself is a jolly belly laughing at its own joke, the colored flags waving like the hands of a magician who has just revealed his trick. So then it gets into an analysis of the sky. Uh, it notices that I use the HDR technique, which is indeed correct. You know, that's one of the many books I, I fed into it. Uh, it says I use the technique with a deft touch, uh, you know, ignoring the, uh, avoiding the pitfalls of the dreaded dirty whites and opting to go with a more nuanced approach. Thank you for noticing. Uh, and then I love how it just analyzes the characters. The characters of this scene are a sorted collection of individual stories. The gentleman standing in an exchange that surely must be something as weighty as the merits of glitter versus face paint commands attention with his stance. And yet the HDR treatment has been kind, for the skin does not scream of a sickly coal miner effect. And it, it pulled that from one of my books. Great. So... And then it gets a little, you know, more critical, you know. It says, one cannot help but notice the ground, which seems to have imbibed a touch too much saturation, perhaps in its eagerness to join the festivities. The grass, instead of tired green at a day's end, appears to, be, appears to have had a bit too much to drink of the HDR elixir, stepping just a bit over the line into the realm of the hyper-real. I agree. Uh, and then it talks about the shadows. They're pronounced enough. It's a balance, but it's not perfect. And I agree with all this. And remember, the critique is pretty kind. You know, it's not that spicy or harsh because, you know, I'm a nice guy. But if you want to, you can ask for it to be more spicy. So I said, thanks, okay? You give it to me more spicy. Make the critique more harsh. I can take it. Give me three things that could use improvement. 
And then it goes, uh, right, let's roll up the sleeves and don the cap of critical candor for a moment. While wow, the festive spirit in this photograph is as palpable as the sticky fingers after a barbecue, there are a few elements that clamor for refinement. Firstly, the rogue saturation levels in the image are akin to a child left unsuper unsupervised with a paint box. It's all rather too vivid, isn't it? Um, and then, secondly, it says the composition is a smidge chaotic, like a symphony where every instrument is vying for a solo. Your eye doesn't know where to alight. Should it be the standing chap, the seated lady, or the sign that reads workshops? <laughs> it's great. And then the last thing it says, the shadows whisper the tale of a harsh midday sun, casting a rather unflattering harshness over the scene. A bit like attending the theater and finding the spotlight operator has nipped off for a snooze. Um, it's great. So yeah, feel free to ask for a harsher feedback and it will, it will give it to you. Okay, now some reasons to subscribe to ChatGPT, okay? 20 bucks a month. Here's my theory, right? People will go, you know, out to bars with their friends and spend, you know, 50 bucks a week or whatever on beer. And you're hanging out with your friends. And let's face it, a lot of these friends are idiots, right? Now, here, for 20 bucks a month, you get to, like, a hyper-intelligent friend that you can ask all kinds of stuff to, right? I'll just give you a few use cases that I've used recently, but you can, you can just shoot the shit with it or you can ask for advice. And let's face it, the advice that comes from a hyper-intelligent friend is way better than the advice you get from your friends down at the pub. <laughs> so here's one I did. I recently started uh, keto. So I go in here and I like ask for easy keto meals to make. Now all this stuff is available on the web, but sometimes you might get a sketch website and this pulls from the web and like organizes everything from you. Um, like I said, I talk about, uh, can I have four sausages a night? <laughs> uh, what should I put in my veggie smoothies that still keeps it keto? You know, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's quite smart. Here's another thing I did. I, I'm part of this, uh, crypto group. Uh, why isn't that loading? I'm part of this crypto group here called the Proof Collective. And we talk about cryptocurrency, NFTs, it's an art collecting group. And every now and then I, you know, after I sleep, because I'm here in New Zealand, I wake up and there's just this giant wall of text. And I'm like, I'm not going to read all this. So I, I come in here and I, uh, wait, what's going on here? Where is it? So I came in here and I just pasted everything in, like this giant wall of text, right? Which is kind of a mess. And then I say like, can you summarize all this? all this bushy for me. And then it summarizes everything for me. It's incredible. You don't care about all these little details uh, or it may not make any sense to you, but it gives me like a nice summary of everything that happened through the night. And then I could even ask like, which members seem the most upset? Cause you know, I know a lot of these cats and it goes through these guys and it tells me like what they're complaining about. And you know, it tickles me and I can kind of get an idea of like what's happening. So that's a good example. You can also, like the other day, I got all this car insurance stuff from my bank. It's like all these PDFs. And I think all it was telling me is I just need to renew my car insurance. But it was just like insufferable, all these PDFs. So I just loaded them all in here. And I said, like, what am I supposed to do? And it just gave me a synopsis. And it said, you don't have to do anything. You're auto-renewed. I was like, well, the bank could have told me that. I mean, you can load in legal documents. You can you can do anything. Uh, here's a little thing I did last night. I like uh I love documentaries and I love documentaries about comedians. So I ask for suggestions. There's a few in here I, I haven't seen. Like I haven't seen the Richard Pryor one. So I'm watching that one now. It's great. Uh, then I said, give me more, give me more. Um, yeah, it's super cool. Okay, here's another reason to get the subscription to ChatGPT4 because you can have live conversations with it. It's like that movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix. There's different voices. And you can have real-time chat, you know, just chat to it like having a smart friend around. Like, I was at the store today, and so you click on that little thing that looks like headphones, right? Is it okay to get miso soup while I'm on keto, or is that kind of a no-no? Miso soup can be okay for a keto diet, but it depends on the ingredients. Traditional miso soup is low carbs, which is good for keto. The main ingredient, miso paste, is fermented soybeans and usually keto-friendly in moderation. However, 
Watch out for added high carb ingredients like noodles or sweeteners. Always check the specific recipe or product for carb content to make sure it fits your keto plan. Would you like more details on the carb content of typical miso soup ingredients? No, I know it's pretty low. I'm not going to add noodles to it, woman, but how about some zucchini noodles? Will that work? Absolutely. Zucchini noodles are a great choice for a keto diet. They're low in carbs and can be a nice substitute for traditional noodles in miso soup. They add a bit of texture and bulk without the high carbs of regular noodles. Just cook them lightly to maintain some crunch. This way you get a more satisfying, keto-friendly miso soup. Enjoy your meal. Anything else you'd like to know about keto-friendly foods or recipes? Hey, what's the etymology of miso soup? Where's that word miso come from? Curious. The word miso in miso soup comes from Japanese. It that. refers to a traditional Japanese seasoning made by fermenting soybeans with salt and a fungus known as koji, and sometimes with other ingredients like rice or barley. The term miso itself has origins in the Chinese word mijang, which historically referred to a type of fermented soybean product. Over time, as the food and its preparation methods evolved and spread across East Asia, the Japanese version, known for its distinct taste and preparation style, became widely recognized as miso. This fermented paste is the key ingredient in miso soup, giving it its unique flavor and name. Interested in more about the history or fermentation methods? No, not really. I'm kind of sorry I asked. It wasn't really that interesting. No worries. Sometimes a curiosity leads to unexpected places. If there's anything else you're wondering about or need assistance with, feel free to ask. Always happy to help with any topic, big or small.